What's going on guys? This is Burrs. I'm here to talk to you about my medical kit. This is the one I would throw in a pack going in the wilderness for a trek. This is not an extended stay. This is basically a day stay or something you'd uh, throw to go to the range maybe. Something like that where you want to have minimal... Um, you don't need to take a huge pack with you. You just need something basically there, you know, in case you need it. Uh, more so for, you know, day treks. <clears throat> so let's get started. This bag is from uh, my Super Tuck uh, 1911 holster. It is thick uh, plastic uh, Ziploc bag. It's not a Ziploc, but it's really thick. Um, and I found it to be, uh, it's airtight and uh, holds everything that I need it to hold. Uh, you've probably seen this in a lot of other videos. I made a video a long time ago about this bag and some stuff is changing it and no one really saw that video because it was one of my first videos. So I'm going to go re I'm gonna re go through this and uh, <clears throat> see what we got in here. So uh, I'll start from top to bottom. <clears throat> uh, first, you're going to want to have access to some gloves. It's the first thing you're going to have access to. Have them near the top or at the top basically. Another great thing you can do is put these in a small Ziploc bag or a small bag to keep them, like I'm contaminating it now. And I bumped the camera because that's how professionals do it. Um, <clears throat> like I'm contaminating them now using them. Uh, what you want to do is probably put them in a bag and um, put them back in. Now I'm actually going to move over here and show you what I found um, through my going through my bag. Here's the old gloves I had in it. Um, these were in there probably for about a year, year and a half. Um, you know, they're kind of, you can hear it there. They were kind of like sticking together. So I went ahead and replaced them with some new ones I have. That's what you want to do in your kit. You want to go through it about every year, maybe once a year. Uh, I got an ace bandage here. Uh, you always want to have an ace bandage in case you got to wrap something, put a little compression on a joint. Um, you know, keep something, you can kind of, <clears throat> you can use this as an ace band, as a uh, triangular bandage, uh, if you wrap it around right. Now, a lot of uses for that. Um, here, now we're going to tackle <clears throat> electrolytes. Big, big topic. Uh, I'm huge on this. Uh, asking anybody out on the trip to Arizona. <laughs> I'm like uh, a freak when it comes to keeping hydrated. Um, I got some drip drop here, which is an advanced uh, oral rehydration solution. Rehydration solution. Um, and I have a uh, Gatorade. This is just a basic Gatorade. This one's supposed to be in a 20 ounce bottle. Throw in a 16 to get a little extra electrolytes and a little better taste. Um, you don't have to use it in a 20 um, to get all that. Because you don't really see 20 ounce bottles laying around. You see 27, 16, 12, 32. <clears throat> if you got 32, just throw two of these in there. You'll be good to go. And uh, there's some drip drop. Take some pouches, some packs of uh, electrolyte rehydration solutions with you. In this little baggie here, <clears throat> I have a, a little pair of tweezers. I have some eye solution. Uh, in case you get something in your eyes, you can kind of wash it out. Uh, or your eyes are irritated. Triple antibiotic solution. Stuff's good to have out there. You can't recreate antibiotic solution or uh, cause little... Uh, um, stuff there. Uh, you have burn solution in here. Uh, in case you get burnt somehow out there, I have two of them in there. You can't see the other one. And I have hydro hydrocortisone anti-itch cream. Lots of different uses for this, but uh, basically you got an itch, put this stuff on it. Next up, <clears throat> let's get into the wound, uh, taking care of the wound. Uh, I went to the dentist once. <laughs> once uh no okay and uh i got a test um of biotin for me and uh, my son so i have two of these bottles that i've used rinsed out and i put peroxide in them uh, they hold a good amount of peroxide um you're looking at two ounces of peroxide here so you can clean out a pretty huge wound with that um or a couple small ones and uh, that's why i use my peroxide in change this out once a year refill it uh, empty it and refill it uh, this is what you want to put, well, I'll do that a little bit later. Um, let me get out just the basics here. <clears throat> you got band-aids, probably the most used thing out in the wilderness or wherever you're going that you need a little medical kit. Uh, throw a bunch of these in there, and uh, they'll probably be the most used thing that you uh, have in your medical kit. Now let's get down into the, uh, the 
bandaging here. There's one thing that I try to keep a lot of, and that's because you can't recreate it in the wilderness. And that is blood stoppers. Um, I have these surgery pads, which I actually had from a surgery I had um, on my ankle. And uh, they work well. Um, the only problem with them is, since they are a pad, they're going to tear off uh, any kind of good um, coagulation, any good skin that you have uh, creating from a, a cut or a, or a tear in your skin. Um, so what I say to that is you want to have something like a uh, non-stick pad to put on top of a cut. So carry a couple of these non-stick. This is a Johnson Johnson triple layer non-stick. This is an adhesive patch that you can put over top. Um, you can use those. Um, the other way to go is find something like a zero form. This is actually what I used um, on my ankle. And it's a, um, it's a fine mesh that uh, is impregnated with um, zero form uh, and a petroleum blend of zero form. Um, what you want to do with this, this is great for, for burns actually. Um, but I found it, because um, when I got a surgery, they had this on there. And the great thing about this is you can use your pad, but you want to cut this to fit inside the bedding of your cut and then put it over. You don't want to put this over your cut. Um, the actual proper way is just to put it inside the, the wound channel. And that will keep the pad from tearing off your good um, uh, stuff you got going on with your cut. Maybe it's a little advanced, but um, I became a real believer in this stuff when I had my surgery. So <clears throat> you want to have, uh, you know, blood stoppers. Um, you usually carry, in this kit, I carry six. I use three of the big ones, three of the small ones. And uh, then I have a bunch of different uh, gauze. I have these smaller three by threes. I have these four by four gauze pads. And I have another three by three. And then I have this one, which is treated with a, um, a solution here. I'm not even gonna try to say it, but this is another advanced gauze uh, sponge that you can put over top. This is a four by four. And this is gonna be a little bit better. This is by Kendall. It's going to be a little bit better than a basic um, dry surgery pad or something like that because it is a little bit, um, it's impregnated with a little bit of this 0.2% um, of this polyhexamethylene biguinid. Biguinid. <laughs> yeah, that sounds funny. Uh, but it's going to be a lot better for you um, than just putting a dry pad on there. Uh, the other option you have is to clean up your wound and uh, clean it up. If you need some uh, uh, stitches or whatever that, you want to go ahead and do that. Put some, uh, maybe some triple antibiotic ointment on top of your, your wound. And once you get cleaned up, you can take one of these Tegaderm films. And what it is, is it's a clear film that you put over top of the wound. And it, uh, it sticks to the sides of the, uh, the skin. And... Um, it'll be clear, so you put it on, it'll stay there, and it's breathable, and it'll cover up your wound and it'll keep it waterproof. Um, so this is something, maybe you have one of these in your kit, it'd be a really good uh, option to have. Um, they're not, some people call them pricey, uh, they're not super pricey. Um, I got five of these for I think five bucks, so it's about a dollar a piece. Um, so if you look around you can find it. And another thing I think a lot of people say take a surgical uh, stitch kit, a suture kit. I'm against that because, you know, 70% of the people who go out to the wilderness or they go to the range or blah, 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 they go out and they need a medical kit. They don't know how to suture and they're going to screw something up. They're going to pull it too tight. Um, they're going to tear the stitches out. Uh, you know, they're not going to put it in deep enough or they're going to put it in too shallow. Um, stitching is an art <clears throat> and it's something I don't want to get into. So these Steri strips are an excellent choice. They're pretty cheap. And um, they're definitely what I would tell the majority of people to put in instead of a suture kit. A uh, suture kit is for you know, people who know how to use that. And um, for me, I'm just going to use a Steri strip. I'm not going to tell you to not use it, but um, for me, I use a Steri strip. Let's move over here to this side where we have the tapes or the, the adhesives. Um, this is a, a breathable tape. This is... Uh, Transpore 3M tape. Uh, this is what you want to tape your uh, your gauze on with. 
and it's breathable so you can kind of tape up your gauze there and then to keep uh, everything out of there you can take this uh, it's kind of like athletic tape kind of like camo form and uh, you just put that over top to kind of keep all the, the junk out of there and uh, move on with your day. Uh, what I do is I just kind of uh, flatten it like that. And then we have a bee, uh, uh, a bee. I always say this when I, I say a bee sting kit. It's a bite and sting kit. <laughs> um, now the thing about, about uh, snake bites is you want to read up on them a little bit because you know, if you don't get to this right away, this is kind of useless to even use. Uh, if you just got bit by a snake and you can get to this within, you know, probably like a minute or two, this is a really good thing to do. Um, if you're like five minutes into it, and it's probably going to be useless and you probably want to get to the hospital, um, in my opinion. So read up on that, but it's good to have those in case you can you know, get to these rel relatively quickly uh, to use them. And then the nicety of having a instant cold pack, um, you know... Someone uh, gets some swelling on something, you can throw one of these cold packs on there, and uh, boom, this is like 90 cents, really cheap. So the majority of the stuff that I've showed you um, is relatively uh, cheap. Um, the majority of the stuff you can probably find in your house. Don't take the stuff out of this kit, keep it in the kit, unless it's an emergency and you have to use it. Um, don't touch the kit, because when you grab the kit to go out, you don't wanna be out in the woods or out in the wilderness or whatever and someone falls and you know they have a big gash on them and you took these out for another thing and you forgot to put them back in and now you have this wound that's like you know gaping wound so you'd have to like tape it up instead you know or you know you take this out to use it you never replace it now you're shit out of luck with um, being able to clean your wound out because you took your peroxide out of here. So that's one thing I really don't like to do is take the stuff out of there. I like to keep it in there um, and not kind of like touch it. So the way I organize my medical kit is from what I need to use immediately to what I need to use as a dressing. So these gloves will be first in line. Second in line is going to be uh, the blood stoppers. So you can reach in there, pull these out. Um, and the bee, the bee sting kit, the bite and uh, sting kit will go in there readily accessible because that's something that needs to be done right away. But stuff like a cold pack, that stuff they can go towards the bottom. Uh, that's something you can kind of wait for for the most part. Um, this stuff's uh, an end result, final dressing type of thing that can go towards the bottom. You want to have this readily available. Um, that's the kind of stuff you want to have readily available um, if you can do it. Um, so that's my medical kit that I take out, what I would call a level one medical kit. Um, if you guys have any additions to it, that's great. The one thing you don't see here is ibuprofen, Tylenol, and uh, I have uh, Imodium. Um, they are in my kit, I just took them out because I wanted to replace them and I made this video. So normally I would have ibuprofen, Tylenol, and Imodium in there, um, as well as Benadryl. Benadryl is uh, great to have in every kit. So those are four medicines I would also recommend having in your kits. So if you have any questions on this, if you have additions, uh, tell me about your kits, make a video, video responses, always welcome. And um, comments, always welcome as well. And until uh, next time, later.